So I was asked a question the other day. It says, was Jonah swallowed by a fish or a whale? Because two times in the Bible it's mentioned, one says fish and one says whale. So we're going to answer that today. Again, if you'd like me to come speak at your church, or if you have any questions, you can always email me, or you can just comment below. So in Jonah 1.17 it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. If you go to Matthew, Matthew 12, it says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In the biblical classification system, a whale is in the fish category because it lives in the water. Carlius Linnaeus made up the current classification system in the 17, 1758. And he basically broke it up into different things, and it's easy to memorize. It's King Philip came over for Girl Scouts, which talks about kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. In 1753, Linnaeus published his Natural Science Masterpiece in two volumes and a 1,200-page species planetarium or planet species in his work he listed all the plant species that have been discovered in time almost 6,000 and classifies them into a thousand appropriate genera it tells a hebrew prophet named jonah son of Amon, who was sent by god to prophesy the destruction of nineveh but he tries to escape the divine mission it's set in a region of jeroboam the second was probably written in the post Elicit period, sometime between the late to, fit to uh, early 4th century BC. So you can look here on the map, on the timeline. Jonah probably fell right here, right before Daniel, after David, in the uh, Book of the Kings, right around 750 BC. Jesus is telling the story again about 28 AD. Carlius Linnaeus made up a current classification system in 1758. And over here, you got shallow thinking critics desperate to discredit the Bible, so they think they can reject it. They think they found a scientific error in God's Word. It says here, despite their habit of respir respirating air, where whales and other large creatures of the sea remained a mysterious fish for ancient writers. It was not until the 18th century that scientists began to systematically investigate how to classify the animal kingdom. So previous to the 18th century, anything lived in the water was considered a fish. This right here is an article about the great fish. It said in every age of the world, travelers far off lands have brought back stories of strange people and strange customs, of plants, of birds, and beasts, unknown to those who stayed at home. Perhaps no sight has made a stronger appeal to the imagination than an enormous fish whose vast bulk he lay stretched out on the surface of the sea or opened his huge jaws to devour small creatures. And you can look at this little picture here. They had all these crazy looking animals that they said they saw in the sea. Uh, I guarantee you that uh, most of those don't even exist, but they, uh, they believe that they saw these things in the water. Even in here, this uh, the Beastry of Book of Beasts, it talks about the Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, could possibly be a giant 15-foot eel. So if you look at the classification system for evolution, it says the phylogenetic tree is a diagram that represents evolutionary relationships among organisms. Phylogenetic trees are hypotheses, they're not definitive facts. The pattern of branching in a phylogenetic tree reflects how species or other groups evolved from a series of common ancestors. And if you look on the internet, you're going to see all different kinds of evolutionary trees. Trees of life and things like that. And they, try to, they try to take every single animal, every single plant, and they try to say they, they're related to each other. And you can see these trees all over the place. And here's a family portrait of monkeys and humans. It says that there was monkeys and right there in the red area, that's where they said they split off and become more human. But you're going to see uh, every type of creature. There's birds and reptiles and mammals and amphibians and all different kind of stuff. But they try to say that we have a common ancestor. This, right, this right animal right here 
is a the sole survivor of a super order. That's the order over there on the side. This animal here is the only survivor of an order. You can see over there on the right where order is. This animal here, the eye eye, is part of a family, the last survivor of a family. And you can see on the right where the family lines up. This little wallaby here is a subfamily, and you can see the family over there on the right, right hand side. This is a cheetah. He's the only uh, member of the genus. The genus over there, right hand side. You know, you have to ask the question if you take a deck of cards, where should the two of clubs be classified? Well, depends on how you want to classify the cards. If you classify the cards by suits, then the two is going to be part of all the rest of the clubs. If you want to talk about the numbered cards, the two of clubs will be numbered with the number cards and not with the pitcher cards. What about if we did the, the, the even number cards? It'd be classified this way with all the even numbers. Or maybe we did the prime numbers. It would be classified with all the different prime numbers. What if we use the Fibonacci versus non-Fibonacci uh, way to classify it? If we looked at the poker, the two of clubs is the least valuable of all the cards. So where, the, where should the two of clubs be classified? Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. And I really don't think the two of clubs cares where humans decide to classify it. It's a two of clubs. It's, it's a card. It doesn't matter. We classify animals by where they lived. You see, it lived in the water, so it was classified as a fish. Right there it is. There's a fish. If we classify animals by how they breathe, then it's not classified as a fish. If we classify animals by how they see it, it's not classified as a fish either. So where should the whale be classified? In the biblical classification, a whale is a fish. And I really doubt the whale cares where we, where we humans think it should go. So it's not a biblical contradiction for the Bible to say he was followed by a fish in Jonah and a whale in Matthew. And another question I get asked is how did Jonah live for three days in the whale? Well, if you look at Jonah 1, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. You go to Jonah 2. It says, And the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited up Jonah upon the dry land. Verse 17, that the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the fish belly of the fish three days and three nights. And never say that Jonah never says that Jonah lived for three days. If you look at Matthew, it talks about Jesus' death. It says, For as Jonah was in the three days and the three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Saying that basically Jesus is going to be dead for three days. And then he's going to get roasted again. This is a Wikipedia thing. It says uh, James Bartley is a central figure of the late 19th century story and how he was swallowed by a hole by a swarm where he was still found living days in the stomach of the whale. And the news was spread by the ocean articles, the man in a whale stomach. Historian Edward Davis has pointed out many inconsistencies. The ship of the story is the Star of the East, a British ship, and the same name existed and sailed during the time which the alleged incident occurred and could, and could have been near the Falklands at the right time. But the real Star of the East was not a whaling vessel, and its crew did not include James Bartley. And moreover, Miss uh, John Killiam, the wife of the captain, wrote a letter saying that he's not, there's not one word of truth in the will story. It was with my husband all these years in the Star of the East, and there was never a man lost overboard while my husband was in there. And it says this, so, this uh, soldier, this sailor told a big uh, lie. Well, anyways, guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know. I'm going to put a couple links on the screen. In the bottom uh, right, I'm going to put the question and answers on there. The top left, I'm going to put something else on there. I don't know what I'm going to put yet. And then a bottom left is going to be a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. 
make sure you guys have uh, subscribed and liked the video. Also, uh, click the bells and tell your friends all about it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have yourself a great day.